Let me tell you a story. Don't blink, random rockers, or you miss it. That is the story of Kubo and the Two Strings. That is the movie we will be discussing as of this week. And let me tell you, it's from Studio Leica. Leica, if I'm or Leica, I believe is how you pronounce it. And just to also be fair, I don't know why it's two when it technically should have been three unless the third strain is technically meant to be Cuba. You'd have to see the film to understand. So, and for the most part, I'm not planning on spoiling this movie because it is best that you know very little about it in order to enjoy it. All you do need to know is that his two big name actor, talented actors, are voice acting in this film. That of Charlize Theron and Matthew McConaughey. All of their Theronisms and the McConaughey's is very well imbued in these characters, though I feel that may be a flaw, but not something that is, or at least a nitpick, but not one I would better stress away from. For me, the, f the thing about this movie is that it is based around this kid, Kubo. He has one eye, and he, of course, Shums this one strain using some sort of origami style paper that magically, just from strumming his strain, he can easily fold up and create little bitty characters out of them in order to tell stories amongst the village. Some of these stories wind up becoming of some form of truth that comes that has been told from his own mother. These stories are, of course. And deal. This film is, of course, a an animated feature in stop motion, which is very rarely seen much of in the th theatrical release. In theatrical release nowadays, as opposed to our usual com more computer generated style of animation. And like a uh, same people who gave us the films that I films Coraline, which I have seen, I uh, didn't care for it too much, but it's. Looking back, in terms of how it handled itself in terms of story and everything, and there was something to be had. And the same can be said for films like para other films that they've done, such as Paranorman, para yes, Paranorman, and of course um, the recently the recent Box Trolls. Um, this film is done by the same focuses more on the Japanese mythology, and when it comes to dealing with plot holes. That's and that's where most likely plot holes do happen, but does it take away from the experience of this as it is for the demographic it's going for with kids and family, and family demographics? No, especially when you're using the family comes first concepts as well, which are done quite well. Though some of it gets a little convoluted, which it brings a sense of, but in a way that brings a sense of intelligence to it. It is definitely one of the best movies out of the year, for sure. Wish we would have had this film a little bit sooner, but, you know, sooner in, in the summer, so we'd have something other than Captain America, Captain America Civil War, and hopefully at some point I could say Nice Guys might have been. We shall see on that. Uh The thing about what you need to know is that it involves, and th this journey is about him dealing with an old part of his history of his past coming back and haunting him back and causing problems for his own family, and he has to deal with that. The villain himself, though not like in Suicide Squad, is not a complete weak sauce, though they do co the resolve is very much kind of a cop out that just kind of was just a little bum fuzzling, but it's which is part of the plot holes. However, the thing that I think people will gravitate more towards is that the way that he stop motion anim motion animation is done, 
or claymation, even though I don't, I feel it's more paper-ish than clay being used, especially, especially given the nature of most of what's been done in the film in terms of the characters and the <laughs> use of paper in it, <laughs> in the story. Definitely something you need to know is to not miss paper and guitars. <laughs> That's something you can take out of as well, uh, other than the whole family comes first concept that they execute quite well. And the resolve is a bit, yeah, it's kind of, it's cop out -y in that family, typical family kids film type way. But it's, but for what it is, knowing that it is that demographic and finding a way to cater to both kids and adults in a good, in a, in a good balanced way, which is hard for a, animated feature film to do 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 sometimes unless you're like Pixar or something Pixar or Disney in this case or something of that nature but but for non-Disney types yeah like in the case of Leica which just has not gotten a whole lot of I'd hope you all have had a chance to see this movie already if not definitely find time to go see it it is definitely worth bringing your kids to the theaters and it, even even paying more money than just matinee. You don't necessarily need to go to matinee. It's just it's a it's a fun theater theater experience, and it's definitely good. Some despite some plot holes, but that's mostly given the use of Japanese mythology in this story. It is still quite good storytelling nonetheless, and it's just this fun, somewhat sense of adventure that I think the kids will enjoy, and even adults to a certain degree, and some decent thought thought in their storytelling helps put this film up at a very very high grade for me too like maybe too high to some people but even with some of the gripes I may have but not enough just to say that this is probably like a studio's best film and I would like to agree with Chris Stuckman in the sense that yeah this could be the next Studio Ghibli but for more claymation stop-motion animation Basically the same kind of thing, but, you know, just done differently than the guys who do Wallace and Gromit or whatever, because that feels, seems more clay-like than anything. But yeah. Guys, if you don't know Studio Ghibli, they are very good when it comes to anime films, and Miyazaki, I think, was the one that used to be a do a lot of really good ones like Spirited Away and stuff like that. There's some, many other good films out there. That, but when it comes to you, Ghibli, just check out their stuff. I do recommend it. Especially if you are anime lovers. And of course, most anime lovers will tell you that themselves. And, yeah. Of course, guys, this film rocks all the way. I definitely enjoy the action scenes. The monkey played, which is Char done by Charlie Theron, is great. The and there are some nice little bitty scenes in there that really are great for in terms of good character and plot and story development that really does somehow seamlessly flow together, even with whatever flaws this the film seems to have had. And the fact that they, I mean, it takes two some of these scenes, how long they've taken, it takes probably nearly years or to to just to make one little scene. A lot of efforts put into the doing these stop motion style animations, and give them give that these types of films a chance. And in fact, I think you could say it's Kung Fu Panda ish, but except it's not Chinese; it's more like Japanese mythology, and you know less you know anthropo anthropomorphic animals and stuff like that. <laughs> less of it, not to say they're they're isn't any, which there is, given, you know, a monkey and a beetle. You know, yeah. Beetle's not technically an animal, it's a bug, but regardless. Both, all performances really well, really well done. Matthew McConaughey just doing his Matthew McConaughey thing, I guess, through this character. And that's quite good. But, of course, Charlize Theron, bringing and taking her badassery she had in uh, Mad Max Fury Road and bringing it into this film bringing 
bringing it into her voice acting talent for this character, which has that, which this monkey is just about, uh, just has that sort of level of badassness spewing out of it. Again, guys, this movie just rocks all the way. Check it out. What did you guys think of it? Just think of Kubo and the Two Strings. If you have seen it, leave a comment down below about it. If you liked what I had to say, you know, just rock it. Rock that like button with thrust if you must. And you know, you guys don't do enough of it. Be time you do. And as always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. And see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, we'll see what movies come out this coming week or so. And more movies have been out. I may not have had a chance to see that. Maybe I have promised and maybe I might get to them eventually. Somehow, some way. Don't know how I will, but I will eventually get to those. If not, you will hear about them eventually in my favorites or best of year list, more than likely. That, for sure, I can promise you, as opposed to some of my usual promises I break, that I like to personally apologize to all my random rockers, fellow random rockers out there. You know, life happens, you know, especially when, you know, you just finally had a girlfriend after, like, so many years. You know, it's one of those things, I guess. Yeah, I'm getting a little vloggy, so what? I've always been. Just to give you a sense of that I'm real and not some kind of robot, guys. I don't just, like, do reviews of movies and music on your own command. I have a life, you know. And sometimes that's over sees what I do here. But I do what I can to bring you content as best as I can within the time frame that I can given the circumstances of my own current life situa living situations. And hopefully you accept them. And yeah. That's it, guys. Keep it once again, once again, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. And I'll see you guys in the next video.